Hi, in this video we are going to discuss about immunity. So immu from immunity you can expect questions like define immunity and classify it, add a note on natural killer cells, what is the role of lymphocytes in immunity and uh, cell mediated immunity itself can be asked has been asked before as a short essay question. So in this video we will be discussing the first question that is define immunity and classify it and also how to write a note on natural killer cells. It can be asked as a physiological basis question also like how does an HIV infection reduce immunity. So when you have to start your answer with the definition of immunity. So immunity refers to the resistance of the body to pathogens and their toxic products. Now classification immunity can be classified as innate immunity and acquired immunity. Innate immunity itself can be further classified as non-specific innate immunity and specific innate immunity and acquired immunity can be classified as active as well as passive. So this is the rough classification of immunity. So then you can uh, write the definition of innate immunity. So it is the in inbound capacity of the body to offer resistance to pathogens and their toxic products and it is due to the genetic and constitutional makeup of an individual. So that, that itself shows that it is an inborn capacity because it is due to the genetic and the constitutional makeup. And as we said before it is classified as non-specific and specific. Then you have to write the mechanism of innate immunity. So if a pathogen tries to enter a body by means of skin, what will happen? The skin itself is a mechanical barrier for us, right? It can enter a body because we have got skin. Moreover, our skin has got an acidic pH and it secretes sebum. All this are path will destroy the or decrease the chances of entry of the pathogen into the body. Now next, if the pathogen tries to enter through our nasal passages, what will happen? We know we've got a mucous membrane which also secretes mucus which will trap these pathogens. Next, we've got hair inside our nasal passages which will uh, also delay the movement of pathogen into our respiratory tract. And even if it tries to, even if it crosses all this uh, upper respiratory tract, still we've got cilia which will in turn move any pathogen or debris that is present outside the body. So this is another mechanism of innate immunity. Now if the pathogen tries to enter the body through our mouth, we know in our mouth we've got saliva which contains lysozyme which will destroy any pathogens that can in, uh, make an entry into a body through the mouth. Similarly, even if it enters through the mouth, in the stomach we know we've got a very high acidic pH which will in turn destroy any pathogens that might have entered. Next, our, uh, the pathogen can enter through our eyes, right? And in our eyes we've got tears which will in turn delay the entry of, patho delay the entry of pathogen through our eyes. So uh, these are the different uh, basic mechanisms by which innate immunity acts. Now even if after all this the pathogen still tries to enter the body and suppose the pathogen reaches our circulatory system that is if it reaches our blood then there will be specific cellular mechanisms against these pathogens. So the first one is that there will be release of neutrophils which will act like a phagocyte and phagocyte was any pathogen or any bacteria that might have entered. Secondly there will be activation of monocytes to form macrophages. So macrophages can be of two types. One is wandering macrophages and the other is a fixed macrophages. So when a pathogen enters, these monocytes will be converted to macrophage and when it is inside the circulatory system, it is called wandering macrophages. And in the tissues, we've got fixed macrophages which are present always in that particular tissue and will protect or act like a defense mechanism against pathogens. So for example, in the lungs, we've got alveolar macrophages. In the liver, we've got kaffir cells. In the blood, as we said, we've got monocytes. In the lymph node also, we've got macrophages. In the bone, we've got osteoclast. In the kidney, we've got mesangial cells. In the spleen, macrophages. In the skin, Langerhans cells. And in the brain, microglial cells. So all these are the fixed macrophages which are resident in the tissue itself and will act as a defense barrier to the pathogen that might enter that particular tissue. So that is the second line. That is, the, I mean, the, that is a, one of the other cellular mechanism against the pathogen. And the third cellular mechanism is our natural killer cells. So since already a short note, a small note has been asked on natural killer cells, we'll just elaborate on how natural killer cells act. So natural killer cells, they are a subset population of lymphocytes. So basically lymphocyte itself 
which provide non specific cellular defense see remember when we talk about lymphocytes we generally talk about b lymphocytes and t lymphocytes right and of which we know they are mainly uh, regarded to with, which are mainly concerned with acquired immunity but here natural killer cells is a subset of lymphocytes itself but they provide non specific cellular defense especially against virus tumor cells and other infected cells now how do natural killer cells act they kill the microbes by the following mechanism first one is osmotic lysis so what natural killer cells do is they make perforations or they make small holes into the pathogen so that water will enter or fluid will enter into the pathogen and there will be lysis of that particular microbe okay second mechanism is they release interferons which in turn will activate other phagocytes and immune mechanism so that that will kill the microbe and the third mechanism is antibody dependent cell mediated cytotoxicity so if this uh, virus cell is surrounded by antibodies that will act as a as a stimuli for natural killer cells to kill that particular cell so three mechanisms by which natural killer cells act is one is osmotic lysis second release of interferon and third is antibody mediated cell mediated cytotoxicity so that's about innate immunity next we'll see about acquired immunity so the definition of acquired immunity is the resistance that an individual acquires during his lifetime is known as acquired immunity and the classification is active so acquired immunity can be active or passive so from this itself we can understand that it is different from innate immunity in innate immunity it was an inborn capacity right but here the resistance acquires because due to the exposure to an antigen right so now we'll see what is active acquired immunity so the def active acquired immunity can be further divided into natural as well as artificial so by natural active immunity what we mean is we get a disease and then due to that antigen we get uh, immunity against it so that is natural so natural active immunity results either from a subclinical or a clinical infection okay and what is artificial active immunity see in artificial active Im immunity we are artificially introducing the antigen okay and and so a body response or body will have an immune response so that is artificial active immunity so here the active immunity is in, induced by introducing antigens into the body in the form of vaccines see all our vaccines are either live vaccines or they are uh, uh, they are antigens in low doses so that it will not produce a proper infection but it will elicit an immune response inside the body so examples of these vaccines are uh back the bacterial vaccines like bcg vaccine which is given for tuberculosis as well as tab vaccine which is given for typhoid then there are many other vaccines the main principle is these vaccines contain low dose antigen which when introduced into our body will elicit an immune response so that we'll get immunity against that uh, particular antigen okay so that is active acquired immunity here the body is producing the antibodies the next is passive acquired immunity so in passive acquired immunity body is not producing the antibody instead antibodies are given here also there are two types one is natural passive immunity as well as artificial passive immunity so by natural passive immunity here the antibodies are from the mother for example in the fetal stage as well as after birth the fetal stage via the uh, blood itself and after birth through colostrum you know colostrum is highly rich in antibodies which will provide resistance to the newborn so here ready made antibodies from the mother is being passed on to the child that is natural passive immunity and artificial passive immunity is transfer of ready made antibodies by injecting hyperimmune sera so for example we give anti tetanus sera that means which contain antibodies against the tetanus is directly injected into the body of the patient so that is how artificial passive immunity works here antibody is being injected right so that is passive acquired immunity so here in this video we've discussed the definition of immunity we've classified it we've uh, seen in detail about innate, innate immunity as well as about natural killer cells and also about acquired immunity and its classification so i hope this is clear thank you